Hey guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan. And today we are going to be doing our first power rankings. Um, we're re we've really been trying to get a video um, like this uh, going. Uh, we spent a lot of time figuring out uh, how we want to rank these teams. We're going from 10 to 1, we're doing the top 10 only. Uh, these, these are the Tables Collective um, rankings. We talked about it. We um, we had we, we were for the most part I think we were in general agreement. We had uh, some tough decisions, but these are our top ten at the table. So coming in at number ten in the touchdown tables power rankings are the Tennessee Titans. Well, yeah, I could just real quickly just give the honorable mention to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. It was a debate between these two teams at yeah. the ten position. Obviously, as Ryan said, we did end up giving it to the Titans, and uh, there were many reasons for that. So I'll let you guys uh, say stuff and I have stuff to jump in on it. I'll do so. Well, I think the biggest reason why we decided to put the Titans over the Steelers is because they've they've been able to put up more points offensively and defensively they haven't been bad either. I mean, you look at Ryan Tannehill, he's almost at 2,000 yards already. Um, he didn't play for a good portion of the season. And then also in the run game, Derrick Henry, 1,243 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's been going off the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and I feel like uh, for the first half of the year we, at this table, we always made fun of the Titans yeah. for being inconsistent. Yeah. And I said Marcus mediocre, but that Marcus mediocre, he left. So I that, mean, that's kind of still true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, he's still Marcus mediocre, Marcus mediocre. But what I'm saying is that he was benched for Ryan Tannehill, and this Titans team is looked literally like a new football team. Exactly. With Ryan Tannehill, and that's the team that's a that's a top ten team, not the team with Mariota. We got to do these on a week to week basis. They started out really bad, but they made the change. They they they've looked like a top ten team since that Kansas City game. Really, in my opinion, is really a signal for them to deserve to be in the top ten. The way Ryan Tannehill out dueled Patrick Mahomes and led a game winning drive against Kansas City. And if you told us that sentence in the offseason, we would have looked at you like you were crazy. So I think that's really a statement win for them and I think they are they gotta be the most confident team in that division. And even they might be having aspirations beyond the division if they can keep playing like this with Tanhill, but they have, they've got some tough games coming up. Yeah, to be honest with you. Coming into the season I I looked at the Titans, I was like, I don't know if this team's even going to win a game this season, but they're yeah. playing pretty well right now. I take that statement back. Ryan Tannehill has been playing some great football, like you talked about there. Ken Derek Henry's been playing great. Yeah. The wide receiving core has gotten a little bit better. And then the defense is playing very well, too. So this team has just improved so much, and uh, they are very deserving of the spot that they are in right now. Got a big game coming up against Houston this weekend. And they play the Texans twice in the final three weeks in that other game sandwiched in between us New Orleans. So really a season defining stretch for them. Yeah. All right, and now coming in at number nine in the touchdown tables power rankings are the Minnesota Vikings, certainly sitting at nine and four. Yeah, the, the Vikings and the, they're not my my favorite team uh, in the league, as you may see some other videos, but I do think that they are deserving of this spot right here. I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, that they didn't want to put them over a few of the other teams because they just think that they're much better than I do. But I actually agree exactly where they are right now. I think the Titans are worse than them and the team above them is better than them. So they're in a perfect position for me at this point. Um, their defense has gotten a little bit worse than last year. Their secondary specifically. Their defensive line, uh, has been, they've been playing great. Daniel Hunter's having a great season. And then they often the side of the ball. Uh, still basically the same people. Adam Thielen's been out for a while, so when they get him back, that'll be definitely a plus for them. Yeah, I think the biggest difference, just like the Titans, is the quarterback yep. position and the running back position. Mm -hmm. the, the, for both those two teams we talked about, they've completely flipped. Kirk Cousins has been a completely new quarterback this year, and Dalvin Cook's showing what he can do. That's been a big reason why they're at number nine. Yeah, and I feel like you made a good point with the quarterback, but also I feel like the chemistry with the receivers, you know, after the the week four loss to the Bears, there were some rumors that, you know, maybe the receivers weren't happy with Kirk Cousins, and then um, right after that they won their next four straight games in the, until they dropped one at Kansas City. Um, but, you know, this is a team that's getting better, and if they get into the playoffs, I'm, I, I'm saying even if it's the sixth seed, don't just dismiss them because Kirk Cousins is a guy who has very good days and some very bad days. But when, when he's on fire, you know, we've seen what this offense can do and with a defense that I think is a top ten unit in the league still, although they have declined a little bit, as Jordan mentioned. I think Kirk Cousins' improvement in his chemistry with his receivers, because like I said in the offseason, with this team, it's only a matter of time before Kirk Cousins starts clicking, and they're 9-4 right now, sitting pretty good. Is that all we got to say about the Vikings? That's all I got to say. All right. All right, now coming in just in front of those Vikings that we have no more to say about are the Buffalo Bills. Well, we got no more to say about the Vikings, but there's plenty left to say about yeah. the Bills. Still... Um, you can start in the backfield. You got Frank Gore and Devin Singletary. I'm just going off with these running backs and yeah. um, quarterbacks right now. And Josh Allen as well, having himself a great um, second year. You look at the receiver core. Um, a couple 
a good pickup in Cole Beasley and Jonathan Brown starting to do some good stuff as well. Even Devin Singletary in the past game as well has been pretty well, been doing good. Mm-hmm. And and you, you we we talk about Josh Allen a little bit, and we see uh, when these running quarterbacks, especially NFL and the NFL today, they're doing a lot better. There's guys like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Trubisky's been running a bit more, Deshaun Watson. These guys are all younger guys who have come from college, and in college there's a lot more running college. Yeah. And once they're in the NFL, a lot of them are having success in the run game. And it's a huge advantage for the team because defenses have to not only protect against the running back running and passing the ball, but they have to try to spy on the quarterback and, and things like that. And that's a huge advantage for this team, and not to mention their defense, has, who has been balling out this season. Yeah. And I feel like the only reason Buffalo is not higher, at least doesn't have a chance to be much higher on this list, is because they don't have a very good resume. You know, again, teams don't make their schedules in the NFL. It's not their fault if they don't have many other good teams on their schedule. You know, um, they've played uh, three games against New York teams, um, and those two teams in New York aren't that great. Um, but their losses, they have two really kind of disturbing losses, I guess you could say, to Cleveland and Philly. So, so two below 500 teams that they lost to. The Philly one was a blowout at home. And then they played New England well. I mean, defensive struggle, you know, 16 to 10. Um, you know, can't take too much away from them there. And then they played Baltimore better than most teams have, only losing to them by one. So this Buffalo team, they got they got two really big games. They got Pittsburgh. Um, that's a big game in the wild card race. And then they got New England, and we all know. I mean, the AFC East can still be up for grabs by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one last thing you talked about their uh, resume that they have. A lot of Bills fans were optimistic because of that resume. And right now, I understand they're playing not so great yeah. teams, but they've been... Uh, especially recently, been producing more and seem to have found their identity. We're going to see who this team really is in the next two weeks. Exactly. All right, and now we're going to see who this number 17 seven team really is right now, and that is another AFC East team, the defending champion New England Patriots. Yeah, and you talked about it. And, you know, it's fitting for me to start talking about this team because <laughs> yeah, oh oh, here it comes again. They are my Super Bowl prediction. Not going to the Super Bowl. And um, although they have been playing uh, worse and worse as of recently, I talked about it in a recent video. I think that they are starting to progress, especially on the offense side of the ball. The defense has definitely declined. That's obviously because their defense was putting up numbers that, like the best numbers ever recorded in the NFL defensive-wise in the first few weeks. But their defense, they are still great. Uh, Tom Brady has been struggling. He hasn't really found that guy. Besides Julian Edelman, you could throw James White in there as well. Uh, Gronk is gone. Yeah. Um, He does media now. Yeah, he does media now. Uh, and so, <laughs> you're referencing uh, Gridiron Heights. Of course I am. Yeah. Who doesn't like Gridiron Heights? Yeah, go follow that it's on tough. Instagram. It's, it's uh, funny. Yeah. Uh, but they've been struggling on the offensive side of the ball against the Chiefs. They looked a little bit better at the beginning and at the end of the game. Um, so I think that they are going to start progressing into a good direction. As the playoffs come, that's when they strive. I mean, you look at Tom Brady's stats right. this year. <laughs> Um, he has 3,437 yards, 60% completion, 19 touchdowns. Those stats um, alone, they're not terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, you if I said these are Tom Brady's stats right now, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. But you look at the QB rating, it's at 86.5. That just cannot happen. But this defense has been really carrying this team and put them in a position where I think if they get into the playoffs, they can be scary, especially with the cold weathers that will be coming in the playoffs. Yeah. And the, Go ahead. And the main thing for the Patriots is – if you get pressure on Tom Brady, that's going to make it tough for the Patriots to be able to win. Yep. And a lot of teams have been able to get pressure on Tom Brady since that pass blocking for this team and that offensive line has been struggling at certain times during the season. So that's obviously been a big factor in this as well. Yeah, but one more thing i got to say about the Patriots before we move on is that they're 0-3 against the other AFC division leaders. So you mentioned you know, once they get in the playoffs, they could be dangerous. How confident are you in saying that when they've literally gone zero and three against three potential opponents? It's just, it's just I'm not convinced they're a super. They're going to be in the Super Bowl like they always are. I think this Patriots team is definitely more vulnerable than they were in years past. I feel, just, just, I feel just, like we say that all the time. So no, but I, I really I, we say I, that okay, all the time. They're zero and three against. I don't want to say real teams because I don't want to disrespect the Bills, who are by our rankings the eighth best team. But they're zero three. Can you name off those teams for me? The teams that they've lost to. Yeah. They've lost to Houston, Baltimore, and Kansas City. All three of those teams are young to being in the playoffs. The Chiefs have been in it a few years in a row, but they haven't been able to do much uh, besides last year went to the AFC Championship. So some of those guys on the Chiefs, you could say, uh, are experienced. But other teams, the Ravens, they have a young team. Who knows what they'll do in the playoffs? And then the other one was, uh, who was it? The Texans. The Texans, and they had a rough year in the playoffs last year as well. So young teams, Patriots, have that experience. I think they could go far. I hope they can go far. I might be a little biased, but that's okay. All right. I, 
we do we disagree on our confidence level on New England, but let's get to number six, the team that just beat the Patriots. One of those three teams, the Kansas City Chiefs, I'll uh, jump into number six. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I'll jump on it again. There's no one Go ahead. to it. So do. Um, these two, like you said, these two teams played each other last week in a very close game. Uh, you could say Patriots won that game in heart, but they didn't win. So that's how it works. I look uh, at the final Tom score. Brady said it himself. He yeah. said in his press conference, he said, you know, that, that should have been a touchdown, but they had a chance at the end of the game, and they just yeah. couldn't make it happen. Yep. So uh, I do, I think to me, these uh, seven, six, and five were all kind of close, in my opinion. I had a tough time deciding which ones, but I ended up sticking with what we had. Um, but the Chiefs have been playing some great football. Uh, we know about their offense, but their defense has actually been playing better as of recently. They were awful, and I mean awful begin season. Every time a team would play the Chiefs, they're like, all right, we got to put up a lot of points. It should be easy. We just got to outscore that offense. And now the Chiefs' defense is actually showing up. Their secondary has been playing better. They're going to get pressure on the quarterback. And they're kind of more of a two-dimensional team. Yeah, and I look at uh, this team. You know, they've beaten some good teams. They beat Baltimore uh, early in the year, and they're coming off that big win um, in New England, which could be very big for the AFC playoff picture. They did lose to Green Bay 31-24 at one point, but that was without Patrick Mahomes. And with with it with Matt Moore being able to play Aaron Rodgers that competitively, I think that says a lot about the depth of their team and how their defense is improving. And they also did beat a very good Vikings defense, a team that we actually have ranked at number nine in our power rankings without Patrick Mahomes. So it's just, it's just it's just it's like you mentioned, it's not just the Mahomes show anymore. Their defense is showing up to these games. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. That's such a good point because. But last Sorry, year we saw point. we saw Mahomes all over the place, and this year he still got good stats. I know he's missed a couple of games, but we've been able to see what this Chiefs team looks like without Patrick Mahomes, and they've been pretty good. Obviously, you got to mention that top wide receiver core in the league, um, arguably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another Tyron thing, Kelly, Kelly Travis yeah. Kelsey, Miko Harvin. I'm missing names too. Demarcus Robinson. Pringle. Pringle. Yeah. Fire Pringle. Pringle. There's plenty of guys out there. Mm -hmm. Sammy Watkins. That's who I saw. Sammy Watkins. Next one. <laughs> All right, now we are going um, top five. Top five, you know, this is where it gets uh, to those big contenders. You know, you got the Green Bay Packers from the NFC North um, leading that division. They are number five in our rankings. Well, at the beginning of the season, I think a, a good amount of people did expect this team to be pretty good. Yeah, I did. And um, I was I was one of those people that said they would be pretty good. But they're even um, over exceeding my standards for them just by a little bit. I think Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers have had a great relationship in the first year. The offense is new. People are trying to um, discover what this team is. So who knows what happens next year with that. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this year right now. And it's Aaron Rodgers, of course. He's getting back to where he was in the years where this team was getting close to Super Bowls. And they got plenty of players around him, Devontae Adams in the receiver core. And the defense. Mike Patton, the defensive coordinator, has done an absolutely amazing job. They finally, finally went out and got some defensive players in free agency, yep. and it's paying off. And Tyler, you missed the, the one thing that I think really, really changed the whole dynamic of this team. Well, and this isn't what I was about to say, but first of all, Aaron Rodgers has been able to find a lot of no-name yep. receivers like he's been usually able to do, so he's been doing good with that. But I think something that's been a major help, especially to their offense, is Aaron Jones and yep. Jamal Williams yep. in that running game. I figured Aaron, you would take yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Rodgers... Uh, he is a great quarterback, and for a lot of his career, he's been fighting with bad running backs and kind of had to do a lot of things himself. Eddie Lacy was probably his best one, and he only was in his prime for about a year or two. Yeah. Um, and then Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, they've been picking it up a lot. They've been able to create a double threat for that team. Now Aaron Rodgers can just run off the play action. If they run play action, they run it well. So yeah. that's a credit to Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, who are both having great seasons, Aaron Jones being the number one. Obviously, but they've both been playing some great football. And um, Aaron Jones, I believe he's second in most touchdowns scored from scrimmage to McCaffrey. Yeah, and Aaron Jones is a really a valuable asset to their offense. And with, with Aaron Rodgers out there healthy, you know, you can never count him out. You know, it, it doesn't matter who they're playing, where it is. You know, they're going to be in that football game with Aaron Rodgers most of the time. However, one time they weren't, and I think this is probably why they were out of the top four, is because of that blowout loss to San Francisco, which, yes, San Francisco is a great team, but you still expect – a, t a team to be able to be competitive with a good team. You might not beat every team. I get that. They got blown out to San Francisco and two less than uh, great losses. They had that horrible game in Los Angeles against the Chargers. Um, and then the, the Eagles game where they had a chance to tie it late on Thursday Night Football but through the pick. But, you know, you guys said a lot of good things. I think they're very deserving of this five ranking. Let's go to four. All right, top four now. We've got another NFC team. You know, 
They are Danger Russ, and that Russ is Russell Wilson. So, uh, give me, we got Seattle at number four in our rankings. You literally just mentioned um, how the Packers were not able to go into Levi Stadium and beat the 49ers team, and that's exactly what the Seahawks team has proven they can do. Yeah, it's a big factor. Um, which is a reason why we have them above the Packers, just by a little. I know what we saw last week against the Ravens, the most recent game we've seen from them, but we're not just going to judge it off that week before. Rams. Russell Wilson has an MV MVP like season. Yep. Um, did I say Ravens? I yep. got Rams. Yeah. yeah. Rams. It's usually me who does that. Yeah. Um, but he's been having a great season. The defense, uh, especially Frank Clark on that defense, it's not seeming to um, be up to those expectations. But the defense needs to pick it up more. The offense, wide receivers are actually doing pretty good considering that they lost Doug Baldwin last year. That's a big help with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett being two main guys there. Mm -hmm. And Russell Wilson, a guy who is who is still in the MVP uh, race and had a rough week last week. The whole team had a rough week last week, uh, like Tyler talked about. But they've been playing some great football. They've been in close games is something that they've been known for this year. They've been in a bunch of close games, uh, and you know, it's if you're going to be in a lot of close games, it's kind of tough to judge you. But when you're winning and you're putting up stats like that, you deserve the spot that they're at. So the Seahawks, although they're in close games, are able to win those games. And a huge part in the NFL. Anything could happen any week. You have to just be able to get the win, no matter what the score. The win is the only thing that matters. The Seahawks may be able to do that, and they've been playing good football doing it. I was talking about Frank Clark <laughs> earlier, and I kind of went back in time a little bit as I yeah. um, realized that, but it's been a struggle without Frank Clark, because yeah. I think I was trying to say yeah. it, but I said that he's been struggling. He has been struggling in, with the Chiefs, yeah. but um, his, his loss has really been hurting their defense. Yeah, and you know, it hasn't always been pretty with Seattle, but you know, they're getting the job done. They've won some of the games. That's why they're number four. All right, now we're getting to the top three. Um, a team coming off a loss, but a team that we still feel the top three team, the New Orleans Saints. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll take this one. Um, to start off, the Saints have been playing some good football. You talked about how they just lost. They lost in a great, great game in the 49ers. And I honestly thought about possibly putting it in front of the 49ers on this. Ooh. I know that they, they lost that game, but it was a very, very good game. And the thing that put the 49ers above them as the 49ers defense. We'll get to them in a minute when they pop out at one or two. Who knows? You'll find out in a second. Um, <laughs> or are they even there? <laughs> no, they're just not even in the top ten. Uh, but the Saints have been playing some great football, especially on the offensive side. Uh, Drew Brees wasn't there all season, but when he's in there, he's playing great. I'll let you guys talk about when he wasn't there. But Michael Thomas is really stepping up. Elvin Kamara hasn't had his greatest season, but he's still putting up some good numbers. That offense is looking really good. That defense, they're on and off at times, but they're... Uh, good enough for the Saints at this time. Well, you said good enough for the Saints. They just gave up. What was it here? Um, 40, wait, 40, 48 points yeah. against the 49ers. 49ers so close offense, to getting 49 Yeah, but the strength of the 49ers yeah. defense. But they also scored 46 against that yeah. defense. I think that's they, really they, says they, a lot about their team. Despite that it really lost. does. It's both these teams. Um, they're very close. Yeah, they're that's very, what we're trying to say. As that game showed. Yeah. That's why they're right there. But since <laughs> the 49ers won that, I think it's for fair to all two. for the 49ers to move ahead of the Saints. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if the Saints had five people there, they could have brought Kittle down and that had numbers were <laughs> higher. But that is not the case. I mean, some good fantasy points right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't get to 100, did he? No. Yeah, so he really got like maybe three points. <laughs> yeah, and then... Now we're going to the top two. You know, you hinted at it, Jordan. Who is number two? Well, it is that team that is just coming off a big win in what is probably going to be the game of the year, San Francisco 49ers, coming off a thriller on the road. What, what's, what are they doing right right now that makes them number two? Well, it's the, it's the change of, of actually having offensive players this year. Jamie Garoppolo has been producing very well. They got uh, three running backs in the backfield yes. that have been doing a lot of great things. And uh, a guy I want to point out of those three is Raheem Mostert uh, because he's not a guy that you would expect to be doing very good. Obviously, Matt Breida and Tevin Coleman doing some good things as well. He's actually re leading their team in rushing yeah. yards right now. Mm -hmm. And he did some good things last year, too. It was just kind of hidden. Yeah. Uh, Matt Breida was the number one guy last year after there were some injuries last year. They had McKinnon, who got hurt as well last year. And I think they had him this year. I don't know if he, he's on IR or what happened to him, but... I have he no hasn't where he is. been there, but they haven't really needed him. Most of been playing some great football. Garoppolo has really stepped up. He's been playing some great football as of recently. And at receiving core, although young, they've been playing a lot better. Yeah. And it seemed when Emmanuel Sanders got there, they just took off. Yeah. I mean, they, he made really, an instant impact. Yeah. Like, they didn't try to like warm him up. He was like, they yeah. fired him. I think on the first drive, he yeah, scored a touchdown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously, you got to talk about the defense. Yeah, we got to talk about the defense. 
know, and I got I got to talk about my guy. I got to talk about Nick Bosa, right? You know, I've been high on him as long as this channel has existed, and I feel like that's completely justified. I'm gonna totally keep this about the 49ers. It's gonna be tough, but I'm gonna do it. Just the way that he has made a an instant impact. You know, that type of you know that top that top pick impact. I'm, I'm getting close. I'm going to keep 49ers only, 49ers only. He's made that top pick impact that you want. You know, he's made plays. You can tell, you know, um, they got a great defensive unit. He's kind of spearheading that defensive unit. Puts pressure on the quarterback, brings a ton of energy, a ton of physicality. He's, but it's not all, but they got guys. You got Richard Sherman, who's kind of gotten a second life in his career. You know, it seemed like he was declining, but he's kind of uh, kind of bounced back nicely uh, after some injuries in previous years. And then they got guys like Fred Warner um, and other guys in the linebacking, linebacker spot. So the offense isn't always putting up 48 points, but when they do, it's just kind of a bonus. But San Francisco's defense allows them to win just about every game that they can. Yeah, I think uh, we covered a lot of it for San Francisco. They've been having a great breakout year for them. Unless you want to say something. No, okay. I'm just signaling. Let's go. Okay. Right, number one, you know, number one, we got some big trust. Baltimore Ravens, you know, this is pretty much a no-brainer coming in at number one. Yeah, they've, 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 been the, they've, they've been the most rounded team, in my opinion. Yeah. I talked about the mobile quarterbacks earlier with Josh Allen. Um, they have they have Lamar Jackson, the most mobile quarterback in the NFL. I also forgot to say it about Maybe Russell Wilson. History. So I have to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, true. Put, up, put up on the break, you know, one year. He's, been, he's been playing great. Um, defense, it, it's so hard for defenses to play him because they just don't know what's going to come. They have a great running back in Mark Ingram, so two-headed, really, you could say almost three or four-headed <laughs> thing yeah. in the backfield because Mark Ingram, um, and I'm blanking, uh, Gus Edwards. Yeah. Gus Bus. Gus Bus. Uh, he was Lamar a big Jackson, part of the offense last year. Yeah. And Justin Jackson, I think. It's, it's one of, I should know his name, I just can't. Uh, sorry, Ravens fans. Uh, but they have been all been very, very good. And, uh, Justice Hill, you're just, talking about? Yes, that's yeah. who it is. Yeah. I had the J right. That running game is really what's been leading yeah. the Ravens, but their offense have, has been good passing as well. Mar Jackson, especially early in the season, was better at the passing game. Uh, but that Marquise Brown, he's been stepping up. And, uh, you know, they, they're just good. And the defense, they have really stepped up too. The acquisition of Marcus Peters, we just talked about with Emmanuel Sanders, the trade during the season, they got him. Their defense started playing a lot better. Yeah, look at this resume for Baltimore. You know, they've beaten Houston, and they've beaten New England, and they've gone into Seattle, and they've beat them too. And they've also beaten San Francisco uh, recently. And even more recently, they beat Buffalo. So it's just, they're, they're not doing this against less than party teams. They're doing yeah. it, this against some of the NFL's best, and they're in position to be the number one team in the power rankings and the number one team in the playoffs if they keep this up. Yeah, yeah and you could say the AFC is as bad as, or is so much worse than the NFC. But the best team in the league right now is from the AFC. You yeah. guys have said many reasons why. I think this is almost undebatable yeah. because how no. good this team has been playing. I know what the 49ers just did last week against the Saints, but this team, clearly the hottest team, and the Ravens just beat the 49ers yep. two weeks good prior. Point. I was going to say that. So there it is, guys. There is our top 10 power rankings um, heading into week 15 of the NFL season. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bells, and comment. Remember, if you comment, you will get a response. That was if we got it right. Yep. And we'll see you guys later. See, see ya. ya.